start with confidence intervals, okay? So what we've done is we've done all, we've collected all these samples, okay? Collected samples, collected samples. And now we're coming, we're getting ready to say what our mean is. Okay, does that make sense? Like we, we've estimated our mean, we are saying that our mean is approximately on Friday. Okay, so you have confidence levels. These are your confidence levels, okay? I'm 50% confident that the mean is between um, 40 and 60. So you guys, this chart is in your blue book. On the, it's in the very back. It's on the, the cover of the back of the blue book. If you have a formula sheet um, out, um, if you are using the, um, the formula packet, it's going to be on the table B, and it's going to be at the bottom. Okay. I think this year is a little bit different. I think it's a little bit easier to read. Okay. So these are confidence intervals. I'm 50% confident. I'm 60% confident. I'm 70, I'm 85, I'm 90, I'm 96, I'm 99.9%. Notice, you are never 100% confident, okay? So, even when you guys leave my room and you say, I'm 100% confident I failed that test, you can't be, okay? You, the only way that you're 100% confident is after the fact. But when you leave, you are you cannot be 100% confident, even though that's what you guys say. So even in the real world, okay, you will never hear someone say, I'm 100% confident that the true mean of the population is blah. They're never going to be 100%. If they were 100% sure, that means they have collected data from every single person in the population. Okay, do you guys understand? It's not just samples. We haven't collected all the possible samples of 100. It is, you have to, you would have to collect that piece of data from every person in your population to be 100% confident. And if there is 3,000 people, you probably did not do that. Okay, so. From there, we have a Z-star, not a Z-score, a Z-star. So I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get confused with that, okay? A Z-star is called a critical value. So there's two things that I've told you. I've taught you about a confidence level, and I've taught you about the critical value. So Z, so if you're using your formula sheet, it looks like an infinity sign on your formula sheet, but in the book it says Z star, and these are your critical values for these particular confidence levels. Okay, so we have a confidence level, we have a critical value called Z star, and yes, that will change, and then we have a confidence interval. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about we're going to do this problem so you can see how to do a problem in this this quiz this worksheet I call them worksheets because you guys really don't have worksheets in AP stats I make my I make them up with quizzes um, I'm going to show you exactly how to work this out so every problem is going to start with a confidence level they're going to give it to you if they don't give it to you you're either going to pick 90 or 95 95 is usually where you want to be confident on Friday, I'm really going to tell you a little bit more. Tomorrow, no live lesson. I'm not going to teach tomorrow. I am going to leave you like a mock, not a mock exam, but I am going to leave you problems for uh, practice and AP. So AP, you can either work on your AP classroom. I'll leave you, I'm not going to leave you a whole bunch of problems of the day, but enough, and then you can work on your AP classroom. Okay, so. Let's go to this um, quiz and we will, we will talk about it, okay? So we're going to work through this and then we'll take notes, but you can get an idea. Usually I, I start this out different ways, but I thought a problem really is a lot better because sometimes what I do is I do a lot of talking and then we never practice and then the test comes and I'm like, oh my God, we didn't practice. So we're going to practice today. You're like, that's great, Miss Flurry. Okay. 
suppose you're, uh, can you see that? Oh, good, okay. So if you're at home, you've printed this out. Okay. Suppose you administer a certain aptitude test to a random sample of nine students in your school and that the average score is 105. We want to determine the mean mu of the population of all students in the school. Assume a standard deviation of sigma equals 15 for the test. So there's a couple different ones that we're going to do. Right now, they're going to give us the population standard deviation. That's what sigma is. They're going to give us that parameter. Um, and they're probably going to give us a confidence interval. Right now, everything is what I call not the real world, okay? We will start doing real world examples. Okay, so what is the upper critical value of 98% confidence interval? So, okay, so upper critical value, that is going to be our Z star, and we're going to write it like that. So when they ask you about upper critical value, sometimes they don't even say upper, they'll say just critical value. This is what they mean. We're going to go to 98% in your book, okay? And you're going to look right above 98% or on your formula chart. So if I look down at the bottom, I scroll here, I have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, 96, 98. Right above 98, you will see a critical value, and that critical value is 2.326. So again, they give you a confidence level, you find the critical, okay? So, what did I just teach you? I taught you how to look up a confidence level, and I taught you how to look up a critical value. Now, it says um, sketch it. Sketching it is literally finding it here. Where would it be here? It would be a little bit over two standard deviations away. So um, it's going to be down here, right? So 2.326, and it's going to be over here. Because it's right, and you guys can't see that because I don't, I'm zoomed out. So you're just going to put it like nor normal, right? It's a normal curve. Where would it go? Okay, so we're Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you how to explain the meaning of a 98% confidence. So, there's a standard saying, okay? So, when you explain the meaning, it's basically an interpretation of what 98% means. So, in this, it means I am 98% confident. That's how you're going to start. You guys, this is going to be what we call the conclusion. So usually explaining what it's meant is what we're going to put at the end of a, of a problem like this. So I am 98% confident. How do I know I'm 98% confident? Because that's the level they gave me, okay? That the true Population mean. I know this is a mean because it says the average score is 105. You guys, we are going to do proportions too, but we start with means, okay? So I'm 98% confident that the true population mean. You guys, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what we've been trying to do this entire year is collect enough data to infer what the population mean would be. This is what we are, this is what we have led up to this entire year. So I was telling Paige earlier today that probably 50% of the test comes from what we're going to do in the next nine to 10, nine to 12 weeks, okay? So the population mean of what? 
what are we trying to do? The population mean for the aptitude test is between and we're gonna we are gonna rewrite this one again and you're like how did I get that I'm gonna tell you and then I'm also going to I'm also gonna we're gonna come back to this one because there's another meaning for it okay so now the question becomes what is the standard deviation, the mean of sigma? Well, what did we do last chapter? What did we do? How did we find the standard deviation? Yep. Remember what I said? It's going to come back to us. So what is the sigma for this, for this um, problem? And our sample size is, okay, and 15 divided by the square root of 9 is, okay. Why can we use the standard deviation for this problem? I know it says what, but why can we? Why, what allows us to use this?